Today I am going to demonstrate how to render a FreeCAD model in Blender. So this table was created earlier. I am going to put a link for that video. Uh, so we are going to first um, set the deviation to 0 0.01 to kind of uh, smoothen the edges. Uh, then we need to export the model out of FreeCAD and I have a video created on that also. I'm going to also going to put that link. Um, so what you have to do is pick the export uh, type, which is uh, object type. We're going to pick that uh, and then that can be easily readable into Blender. So we save that. Now we're going to import it to Blender. So first thing, we're going to blow that cube away and then let's import that model uh, we created in FreeCAD. So same format, object format. Uh, pick that model, we bring that in. So now it's kind of messed up, it's because it's clipping is not set right, so we're going to increase the clipping uh, distance um, so that way we get a good view of the model we already got into the blender. So let's make it like uh, let maybe like 10,000. Yeah, that fixed that. So now we got the entire, you can view the entire model. Uh, now we are going to change the units. Um, so we created in the model in imperial units in inches. So we're going to change that and we are going to scale that. Um, now, um, unfortunately, we have to go and redo that uh, clipping again because now we, since we changed the units, so we're going to say 10,000 inches. So that will do the trick for us. So we got the model. Now we want to orient the model, uh, let's say facing parallel to the XY plane. So I'm uh, going to rotate the models. R and then uh, then say in x axis uh, x and then give how much you want to rotate 90 degrees so press like input 90 so you can all do all that just by keystrokes uh, now next thing is to erase the model so that it is sitting on this xy plane so i want to measure a distance so since we have given all the units in inches uh, you can select a vertice uh, or an edge, I would say, and measure how much you want to raise it up. So let's say I pick the edge and it's 27.5 inches. I want to raise it up by 27.5 inches. So what you have to do is grab everything uh, so you can select every all the elements uh, and G for grab and Z for uh, moving in the Z play Z axis and enter 27.5. Now you're kind of uh, right on the XY plane. Now I want to unwrap this um, um, at, at least the top table top so that I can uh, put a special uh, texture, a wood texture. Uh, that I'm going to bring it from outside. So that's why I need to unwrap. So any model that you create uh, in FreeCAD, if you import it into Blender, you need to unwrap it. So here is what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm in the UV editor uh, window, which is on the uh, left side. And now uh, what you're going to do is uh, before you go to unwrap, I want to remove some of these edges. So you can see some of these edges um, that is diagonal in every uh, face. Uh, I want to pl blow them off. So you're going to pick them and say dissolve. Uh, and you pretty much do uh, that for all the faces. Uh, because if you don't, you you can unwrap but you, you're going to have some weird uh, shape uh, so you you want to get rid of them so dissolving them will be fine so you have to do all the uh, all the faces here uh, yeah it's a little bit time consuming but uh, you know it's not a complicated model so you can do it quickly so we got all of them out 
Uh, now, next thing is you have to do is to, um, you know, un in order to unwrap, you have to pick some seams and uh, mark them and then do the unwrapping. So I'm selecting them by control and picking them. The selecting only the edges I want to uh, unwrap. Um, so I'm going to be carefully picking few edges, not all the edges, uh, and then I'm going to mark them. Um, and how you do that is um, you, once you pick all of them, right click and say mark seam, and that will highlight in red. So everything is marked. Now you want to select, press A to select everything and press U to uh, do the uh, unwrapping. So now we have unwrapped everything. Um, now, um, now you can see that it is kind of a lying, uh, the, uh, the top and the bottom face and then the side edge, uh, faces are all unwrapped. Uh, I want to move them around and align them and you will kind of get an idea why I'm doing this when I bring in the external uh, wood texture jpeg file into this and and you'll get it you know it'll it'll be more clear why i did this way so keep uh, you know bear with me and and keep uh, um, you know uh, watching until i bring in the uh, the uh, outside wood texture so we're going to align them in a in a certain manner uh, so i'm going to be um, rotating as well as moving them around um, and then once i'm satisfied i'm going to bring in this uh, the uh, the uh, wood texture um, so you can go to you know select and pick whether you want to pick a vertice edge or a face so i'm going to for this case for the last one i'm going to I pick the face and I pick that one and now I'm going to rotate it uh, by 90 degrees and then translate it uh, so that uh, I get it properly uh, uh, oriented within the UV editor. So yeah, that's where I want that. Now, seems like uh, everything uh, are, uh, oriented the way I want it. Just so um, now um, this let's save it uh, before we lose this um, now i'm going to create another window uh, and then go to and that window i'm going to you know, select the shader editor uh, because uh, i want to assign the uh, the base color uh, to which I'm going to you know kind of put it bring that uh, wood uh, uh, texture onto the UV editor and then assign that to the um, shade editor that's what I'm doing so I'm going to create a new material uh, because if you try to overlay the uh, the texture I'm going to bring outside over the existing uh, color it won't work so that's why I create a new color so you can see uh, in the shade editor uh, the the color that I have created is appearing um, or the material I would say the material is the wood I call it wood top but that's the material I created now I have already bring a uh, board the uh, wood texture it's a this is just a jpeg file which i kind of downloaded there was a, like a free the uh, uh, available website i just uh, download it from that um, now what i'm going to do is uh, assign the color to the base color in the uh, shade editor so that uh, kind of uh, assigning this uh, wood texture onto the uh, unwrap uh, faces. Now, um, if you go to the uh, viewforge sh shading uh, and pick the material preview, you can see 
the uh, the how the wood texture is applied onto the uh, tabletops so this kind of accomplish uh, what i intend to do um, in terms of uh, getting the uh, you know wood texture uh, uh, assigned to the uh, table top uh, and you can see that it's properly aligned with the uh, the um, grain structure of the, of the wood and it is exactly the same as what it is uh, in the uh, uh, the JPEG file. Um, now uh, I going back to the uh, layout file uh, because now I want to uh, I accomplish the unwrapping and then uh, you know assigning the wood section onto the table top, but I want to assign some colors to the rest of the elements. So I'm going to add some simple uh, textures to that. Um, you know, before doing that, I'm going to kind of a blow off the existing color uh, and then assign a new uh, material uh, to that and then give a new color to that. So let's name it, uh, give some name to that. Um, and then uh, we can uh, start assigning that material to the each of the elements. Um, so that's what I'm doing right now, uh, giving a name. Um, now, uh, once you uh, assign, assign a um, like material to one of the elements, what you have to do is uh, you can pick the same material uh, on and, and essentially go and pick that material to the rest of the uh, the elements so i'm picking each of the elements and assigning that uh, material that's what i'm doing here so we'll you know there are a number of elements so we can assign all the uh, elements with that material so it's complete now so let's go and shade it uh, and seems like uh, it's not showing up and i think that's uh, kind of a bug but you can get around by kind of a uh, you know use the use nodes uh, and that will kind of uh, fix that problem so it, it's a kind of a lagging uh, i think it's re uh, something to do with the lag in the rendering mode but now we kind of got through that uh, so it's material colors is assigned to the uh, all the uh, table elements now um, we in order for us to um, you know we need some uh, lighting and then we want to get some shade or a shadow effect due to the lighting uh, onto uh, onto a surface so we are going to create a, a essentially the flow or the base that the table is sitting on so that's what i'm doing right now i created the cube and i'm scaling it freely um, you know in both x and y directions so that uh, we uh, you know cover it the entire uh, table and it's more than the table so that we can get a nice shadow um, so you, this is a simple model so you can you know scale it how you know you've as far away as you could uh, but if you are creating a room or something like that then you have a, some kind of a limitation how much you want to expand the flow but in this case it's, it's just we freely expand it both in x and y direction um, so then we are going to assign some color we are going to uh, give it a color we're going to make it a little bit darker uh, so that uh, when the shadow falls onto that uh, it gives a nice reflection now uh, next step is to get the lighting right so uh, what i'm doing here right now is um, uh, so we're going to keep the color of the lighting same but we're going to increase the power to let's say 400 watts of uh, you know power and then specular to 4 and radius to 0.2 uh, 
uh, that will kind of give us a nice uh, lighting effect and a shadow effect. Uh, another trick I you know, kind of got to know is that you have to adjust this clip start uh, to get the shadow effect, uh, both the clip start and the end, uh, so and the bias uh, to get the right uh, shadow effect. So you may have to play around a little bit uh, in order to get that, uh, maybe increase it or decrease it. Uh, but you, once you kind of a, uh, kind of uh, you know you can do like a trial and error and figure that one out what's the best uh, way to get the shadow effect um, now of course you can see the model is a little bit uh, kind of a screwed up because uh, my table is not sitting on the floor so I'm going to grab the flow uh, G and Z direction and then move it so that it will align with the uh, uh, the table is aligned with the flow so that's kind of a, you can see that it's already shadow is falling is nicely so this is what i wanted to show you uh, hopefully this is helpful thank you see you again